All right, let's uh, start out by looking at chapter one here, and we're going to go over the first couple sections of this video, and then we'll save the other stuff for another uh, for some other videos later. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start out with these first two sections, so why program, and then computer systems, hardware, and software. And uh, kind of talk about that a little bit, and then we'll get to those other things later. Uh, so the first couple pieces here are really talking about things that we dealt with in CIS2. So if you haven't taken that, that's fine. But uh, this may be a review for you if you've done that. And in fact, we did a lot more in CIS2 than what's presented here. So this is a programming class, uh, but we will talk a little bit about uh, some, some hardware and software stuff too So along the way. All right, so we have computer. So, so just some basic terminology here. So computer, you know, programmable machine designed to follow instructions. Uh, we could add a lot more to that, but uh, we'll leave it at that for now. And uh, we've got, we've got uh, program or software. So those are the instructions that the computer's following to do something for you. And then the programmer is the person that is uh, putting that stuff together to tell the computer what to do. Uh, so without the programmers, you're not gonna really have anything uh, on a real basic level, right? So uh, and the computer's just a, I don't know, a huge paperweight, I guess. So uh, those are basic, basic ideas there. All right, so on the programming side, I just wanted to mention really quickly, the book talks about this too, uh, the artistry side of things. So this is, you're talking about interface design here, uh, how the user is going to, you know, interact with the program, what's going to happen if this button's pressed or they scroll over here, what does the window do, those kinds of things, uh, versus the science side of things where that's where, you know, the main coding is going to come in. So you, this is where you're writing it. This is where you're testing it, uh, you know, trying to decide, hey, is this doing what it, what you need it to do? So I know like my, uh, uh, one of my wife's cousins works for uh, Salesforce.com. And uh, he works strictly on GUI design. He's on the artistry side of things. So GUI meaning uh, graphical user interfaces. And he, what he does is he has clients and they would, you know, they, let's use a website as an example. They want a website design to do different things. So he'll go in and design it. He knows enough code and he knows enough about coding that when he work, goes to his development teams, uh, he can, uh, you know, have a design that he has and then go, okay, this is what I want it to do. Uh, you know, what language do you think we should use? This is what the company uses for this stuff, uh, you know, and, and kind of lays it all out. And then he works with that development team to actually do the coding and, and take care of the science side of things. So he's on the artistry side, uh, loves what he does, and, and uh, he knows just enough coding to get himself in trouble uh, sometimes with the development team, but uh, but he, he loves it. So it's it's a great thing. So you're not always, you know, just knowing a little bit about coding is is uh, one way of getting into the, to the industry. Doesn't mean you're going to sit and program all the time, uh, although you may really like to do it. So, uh, you know, there's there's just a different size of things. Uh, on the uh, when we get to this little section here, so hardware and software, we'll talk just really briefly about uh, some hardware components and then the way that some of the software uh, works with it. So hardware just being physical components of the computer. So we have the CPU, uh, you know, RAM, random access memory here. Uh, so as our main memory, secondary storage devices, input and output devices, uh, you know, we could throw other things in there too uh, along the way, but we're trying to keep this real simple for now. Uh, we, if we look at this photo just for a second here, we've got uh, this little image from the book and it starts out with the heart of things where we've got the CPU and the RAM right there in the middle in that shaded area and uh, secondary storage devices down below. This is an old platter drive. I say old, I mean, we're still using them in our labs, of course, but, uh, well, not all of them. We're slowly but surely switching over to solid state drives, uh, but uh, that's a that's a big, big upgrade for us. So uh, luckily prices are coming down and uh, we should see more and more solid state. So obviously benefits to that is, uh, you know, no moving part, no moving parts for a solid state drive. They're extremely fast. Uh, you know, they're just, they're just, they're just. They're straight up awesome, right? So solid state drives, love them. Okay, uh, looking at input output devices. So kind of some traditional input devices, uh, keyboard, right? So you're typing things in, it's being input uh, sent into the computer. Uh, output devices on the other side, you know, if you think about a printer or a monitor, uh, those are traditionally output devices. And of course you could have some things that are input and output devices. If you look at down, uh, oh, down over here, we've got this little Wacom tablet um, and uh, they have, a device called the Cintiq. So if you use a Cintiq, it looks similar to this, except it is a monitor. So it looks just like your monitor, but you can still do the same kind of uh, stylus work. 
you can airbrush on it uh, you can do all sorts of different things so it's an input and an output device because you're viewing it it's great for things like uh, oh, graphic artist work or if you're editing photos in Photoshop uh, or other programs then you can work right on the screen and it works great so anyway so input output devices uh, you can have some that are both so that's just an example of one uh, our CPU uh, this is the component that's actually going to run your programs for you and and of course other things too right uh, but we have two pieces to this we have the control unit where you're actually getting the instructions and uh, coordinating what the computer is going to do to run them and then the ALU which is going to perform the math operations on there so two pieces here control unit and the ALU uh, and this is just a you know an image of a, of a CPU so just a little i7 processor here um, the top side bottom side where you can kind of see the pins there where it goes into the motherboard um, so anyway so there's that uh, if we go over to the next piece in here so cpu's role what you're doing this is a just a simple cycle uh and you know fetch decode execute so we're getting the instructions we're decoding them and then we're executing them and telling other things what to do uh on the RAM side of things, so RAM is is volatile memory, meaning that when you turn off your computer or, or it's powered off uh, from you know something weird like I don't know lightning or whatever, the power you lose power, uh, you know whatever it might be, everything disappears out of RAM, right? So RAM has your programs that are currently running, the data that's uh, being generated there, and uh, but if you turn it off, it goes away. So random access memory meaning it can access the instructions from any of the memory locations, uh, and uh, you know, of course, every system has RAM, and uh, but it is volatile, so it, it goes away. If we look at the way that uh, this is kind of set up a little bit, uh, we're talking about bytes, so bits of bytes. So we have bytes, and then we have um, a byte consisting of eight bits, and either on or off. So this is Traditional, when you think about this, you're thinking about binary code. So bits of the smallest bit of memory, binary code. Uh, I don't know. I hear people argue to the death about whether the I comes from binary or from digit. But most of the time you see it written this way, and that's where we get bit. Uh, so we've got this little little piece in here. So um, binary code, if you did uh, any binary code conversion or playing around with that in CIS2, you know you know what that is. So ones and zeros. Um, one is on, zero is off. And an easy way to, to kind of think about that, at least I think, is with the dip switches in like a garage door opener. Uh, this is a little bit older one. Uh, they're a little different now than the newer ones. But uh, uh, you've got on or off with these switches. So this it's the way the binary code works. So up is on, down is off uh with it with these dip switches so it works similar like that so if you look you know for visual reference it kind of has that in there um and then our byte eight consecutive bits uh, has an address and memory when we're talking about our uh code later on we will talk about some of the memory addresses where our code is is executing and storing uh for example variables and those kinds of things so we'll look at that uh you know in in the future uh, secondary storage device, we talked about this uh, already just a little bit, but uh, non-volatile, meaning when you shut it off, it's still there. So when you save something on your hard drive, you turn your computer back on, uh, the file is still there, right? So if you hit save, so it's still there, uh, you know, it's, it's good to go, right? So you can use it. So, or if it's burned to a disk or uh, on a USB flash drive or solid state drive or portable solid state drive, you know, whatever, uh, you know, you have all those different ways of storing things where it will stay uh, so you can load it back up in RAM and play with it and use it and make adjustments and all that stuff. Uh, input devices, we talked about quite a few of those already, so I feel like we can kind of skip through there a little bit. Uh, Self-explanatory. Okay, last thing just on this uh, before, we, before we close and go to the next section. Uh, system software. So different types of uh, programs that you may have, right? So system software, so programs that are managing the hardware uh, and, and the programs that are on the computer. You have operating systems, so whether it's Windows or, uh, I don't know, whatever Mac system is going on right now, or even like Android. Uh, what is it, Android that comes with all the cool names? So you've got all the different what, Marshmallow or Oreo or whatever they got going on with their um, things. They always have the best names. So Ice Cream Sandwich, uh, so uh, that's always fun stuff. So anyway, so different types of software so operating systems uh, managing devices or telling them when to run you have utility programs so things that will constantly run so your, your virus scanning programs uh, maybe data backup like I use uh, backblaze so it's constantly checking uh, to see it checks uh, to see if there are any files that have been modified if they've been modified then it does an incremental backup so that if I I don't know if my house goes away or my computer gets fried and 
I don't know, it does whatever, then uh, I have an online backup of that stuff. So those things are running. Uh, software development tools, so different types of things. We will use, uh, you know, compilers, uh, IDEs that we will use uh, in class. So just, again, just different types of software. There are a lot of, a lot of different things that, that you, can, you can do with uh, software. So anyway, we'll stop there before we go on to the next section in another video.